Order up, you guys. We got some green crayons in the after hours. It is getting absolutely disgusting. Tons of green crayons. Just gobble them up. Us apes are really taking this stock as high as we can go. I'm recording this video as of 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're sitting at $37.31-ish cents, give or take. This is absolutely disgusting, and the green crayons are out in full. But hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, make sure that you ring that bell for me too. We'll talk about the charts within Weeble, we'll talk about the short interest through Ortex, Banco Tracker, we'll talk about Mudrick and their whole situation. And then I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on for you guys and give you my tinfoil hat opinion of what might be going on with Mudrick because it is definitely very suspicious that a company that essentially buys the shares and then sells the shares and then claims the company is overvalued it within the same day. Kind of a little bit of a eh, situation, but I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on and give you guys that opinion. But let's go ahead and dive on into the chart here and you guys can just see how filthy this thing is running right now but we had the pre-market we had 27.35 and then we opened at 31 dollars 89 cents we did fall here a little bit and we did have our intraday low here at 28 dollars 53 cents the thing that i really want to point out is we had several periods here during the day of good consolidation one of these being one and getting consolidation around the support of $30.40 is definitely very good. What this helps us do is just validate our levels of supports and resistance and also allows the stock to cool down on the RSI too, which is a good thing. And then throughout the rest of the day, after we hit $28.53, we were setting higher lows, which is definitely a very bullish indicator for the stock. We got back above the VWAP, which stands for the Volume Weighted Average Price. And what this essentially tells us, when we're trading above the VWAP, you're more than likely making money off the share that you bought that day, and it's a very bullish day. Versus when you're trading below the VWAP, it is considered a very bearish indicator, and if you bought shares that day, you more than likely didn't make money from it. Now... What I really want to highlight next is these couple of candles right here at 1245, 1246, and 1247. They respectively have about 5.6 million shares, 3.09 million shares, and then we have one here that has about 1.8 million shares. And the thing that I really want to talk about is Mudrick had to dump their shares at some point. And I believe it was definitely at this point. It's just my personal opinion. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice, of course. But... Really, when I take a look at it and I line up all the candles, it had to be at roughly around this point, or maybe they spread it out throughout the day. But we definitely saw a good bit of selling pressure here, followed by a lot of shorting. The thing that I really like about this is we did hit $30.40, and we found support at $30.40. Absolutely phenomenal. This candle right here is huge for the stock because we're validating a higher level of support which is amazing for amc and what this is only going to allow us to do is to essentially jump higher when we want to jump higher hopefully in the next couple of days and this is just really setting the floor and moving the floor up and up and up and that staircase we were talking about we're moving the stock up and up and up which is exactly what we want now Y'all know I love my consolidation, and we did get a good bit of consolidation here for a good part of the day between this really 3040 channel and 3263 for a good part of the day. The fact that we're consolidating at these higher levels and that we're trading at these higher levels and we're closing at $32.04 is very good for the stock and is a very bullish indicator for the stock, in my personal opinion. And I really like this because what this is doing is it's validating our levels of support, allowing us to jump higher. And that's really all that we want is to continue to continuously jump higher and higher because we're costing the shorts more and more money alone. I believe if we take a look here in the news tab, there was something um, talking about, yeah, AMC and GameStop rallies deal shorts another $591 million below. $591 million below alone between AMC and GME that the short positions have lost. And we're running up to $37.20 here in the after hours. Just strap in guys, it's going to get bananas.
Next thing I really want to do is hop out here to the five day time frame. And really, we're riding this nice ascending level of support, which is definitely good. Yes, it is a very steep ascending level of support because essentially not one, not two, not three, but four trading days ago, we were trading around $13.50. And now we've almost tripled that, which is insane to think about. But when we dive out here to the one month, one hour time frame, and really take a look at it, we're taking a very good whack here in the after hours of our of our intraday high, an all time high here of $36.72. Now the huge thing is, can we do this tomorrow during the trading day? If we can do this tomorrow during the trading day and really get above $36.72, I think personally, in my opinion, keep in mind, not a financial advisor, not financial advice, but I think we personally can run well above that once we get above $36.72 and validate it as a level of support, which in my personal opinion would be closing a 30 minute to a maybe one hour ish candle above that level and just a saying new floor kind of thing. Definitely very bullish for the stock. And that it's something that I'm going to be looking for tomorrow because once we get above $36.72, I'm going to put my hands up and I'm just going to watch. Because from a TA perspective, we can look for periods of consolidation. We can try to validate intraday levels of support and all that kind of stuff. But when we zoom out here to the max time period and really take a look at the month time frame, you can see anything really above $32 and what is this? $33.51. AMC does not have anything to go off of. So we cannot go off of any past history for AMC of, well, it traded at this level previously because we haven't traded at this level previously, which is crazy to think about, guys. Wrap that, like, put that in your heads. The levels that we're trading at now, we've never seen before in AMC. That is huge. Now, let's move on over. All right, you guys. Now we're sitting here in Ortex, and we're going to take a look at the short interest data on Ortex, and then we'll take a look at Stocko Tracker. 2.15% increase of our short interest change today. Current short interest or free float is sitting at 17.87%. And our current short interest is sitting at 87.75 million shares. Our average cost to borrow, 14.14%. So we're seeing that cost to borrow go up because our utilization is continuing to go up. So it's becoming harder and harder for lenders to find short shares for these short, the shorters who want to short AMC. And additionally, it's becoming less and less profitable to short AMC because it's continuing to go up and up and up and up. Shoot, the other day on Friday, we almost had a 50% day. Today, we pretty much had a 20% day and we're ripping here in the after hours. So who, Lord knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But let's take a look here at Ortex. 175 1,244 calls currently in the money at $35, which we are currently trading above. If we open tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time above $35, we will put 27,525 calls in the money. There's 200,000 short AMC shares available to borrow, 36,510 short ETFs. And the thing that I really want to point out here is that 104, 104 today, 8.8% borrow fee. 30 short AMC shares at 116, zero. The shorts are starting to run out of bullets. And yes, we can see shares on loan be returned, which gives the shorts more bullets. But really, eventually, the shorts are going to run out of bullets because the estimate, the utilization is starting to get paid close to that 100%, which is ultimately going to drive up that cost of borrow fee. And when we take a look here in Weeble, the shorts lost. $591 million today alone. That is insane. That is a lot of money. And that does not include this cost to borrow fee. I want to point that out. Now, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is what Adam Aaron said to this morning about AMC issuing 8.5 million shares to trade to essentially give to Mudrick. So they get Mudrick had purchased 8.5 million shares at a $27.12. $27.12 a piece. According to AMC's filing, the company's stock hit a high of $33.53 per share, meaning Mudrick could easily have gained more than 40, 40 million on the rally. Now, the huge thing is AMC got $230.5 million from issuing this 8.5 million shares. Now, if you remember 
previously, we had a 43 million share dilution and they raised like, it was like 400 million or something like that. It's huge guys, it's huge. What AMC is doing is just stacking the cash on. They had 1 billion from a previous quarter. They had Wanda get out of their position. They had now Mudrick Capital sell their position. They did the at the money offering of the 43 million shares. They have so much cash piled on the side. They're going on the offense. And when we take a look at Adam Aaron's tweets, because he tweeted about this, I'll link his Twitter down in the description along with the CNBC article. He wanted, he started, this is from the bottom up. So sorry in advance, but he said, let me address the smart raising of equity capital. I believe one of the best things AMC did in 2021 was raising $428 million a few weeks ago at $9.94 per share. Rather than delusion, delusion, <laughs> delusion affecting AMC badly in the short term, as some feared, it greatly strengthened AMC, which is definitely true. He is talking about smart dilution versus companies just doing essentially dumb dilution just to get money into the company. We are seeing some terrific opportunities to pick up important theaters from faltering chains. This is a real way for AMC to grow again, creating immediate value of AMC shareholders, but we need more cash to get these theaters under lease, which is huge. And this is really a huge deal. If AMC is continuing to buy out more movie theaters, it's going to only improve AMC and make them a bigger and bigger company. Keep in mind, they are already the biggest movie chain across the whole entire world. The third tweet here, today we announced selling 8.5 million AMC shares at a price of about $27.12 each. 8.5 million shares is less than 1.7 of our outstanding shares and is a small portion of our typical trading volume, but gives us 230.5 million of cash to, to use primarily to grow AMC. First, our sites are the sh are <laughs> first, our sites are the strongest Arclight Pacific theaters that will not reopen due to pandemic pressures. It makes sense. A lot of movie theaters, smaller movie theaters, had to go out of business because no one was coming to the movies. No one is out of the woods yet, but we like AMC's improved liquidity, the increased vaccinated people, and the imminent release of new blockbuster movies. We're talking about Fast and Furious 9, A Quiet Place 2, all Top Gun, all these new movies getting ready to come out. It's definitely huge. In our view, this is not a mind, mindless dilution, but rather a very smart raising of cash so that we can grow the company to many to many of you on Twitter to grow your own company. Watch out, naysayers. AMC is going to play on the offense. Here we come. The fact that the company said that they're going to play on the offense is huge. Yes, Mudrick did sell this. Yeah, sure, maybe they did profit from it. But in the end, tinfoil hat time, putting it on my head, I believe what Mudrick ultimately did was to sell their position because they wanted to establish a short position within the company. And the reason why I say that is because if we take a look at Citadel Advisors LLC ownership of Mudrick's capital stock, ticker symbol M-U-D-S-U, you can look this up, I'll link it down below, we see that Mr. Kenneth Griffin owns 4.70% of Mudrick stock. I'm not one to have tinfoil hat ideas, but this definitely causes me to think a little bit about the situation. I feel a little crazy talking about it, but it's definitely something that is valid to point out. I'll link all this information down below, but guys, strap in. It's going to be a crazy time. We're going to Tendy Town. We're well on our way there, and I hope to see you guys on the moon so we can enjoy a nice moon. Bye. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.